Doors are closed, ready to enter. Welcome, welcome at the Heinrich Böll uh, Foundation in Berlin. Um, I think it's an evening that shows the diversity of the Heinrich Böll Foundation. Over there, we talk about Syria. Here, we talk about the energy and the energy transition in Southeast Asia. Welcome. Great, you are having. Uh, found the way to, to this panel discussion. Um, my name is Richard uh, Fuchs, energy transition um, reporter from Germany's International Broadcaster. I uh, will be, we'll be the host for tonight, and I'm really looking forward to the discussions. Um, Manfred Hornung from the Heinrich Böll Foundation um, Bangkok office will have a couple of words to us, and then we'll start with the debate. On uh, behalf of the Heinrich Böll Foundation, I'd like to welcome you to this um, evening where we talk about, as you can see here, about the uh, struggle on renewable energy in Southeast Asia. Uh, just to my person a little bit, um, I'm in charge of the regional work of Heinrich Böll Foundation in Southeast Asia. So technically, we um, have a portfolio that covers uh, the ASEAN states. Um, in 2016, we made uh, quite a shift in, in programming uh, to the extent that we are now, if uh, I'm uh, well informed, the only office within Heinrich Böll Foundation that has a distinct transnational and transboundary program. So we do not do uh, activities on a national level, but we try to connect uh, partners in a transboundary, transnational way across the region on specific topics. Um, as part of our portfolio, we have two components. Um, one is uh, called democracy and participation, and the other one is ecology and social justice, which uh, we tr like to work on at, at an interface, so we try to connect these issues. Our program and projects are, in essence, uh, driven by ideas of political economy. We, we really like to look at issues of, of interests of actors and, and also power relations between the different actors. <clears throat> and when we started that program in 2016, Actually, we came together with Green ID, a partner in Vietnam, who's also represented here. You will later um, meet with, uh, with uh, representatives of Green ID, who told us that the energy issue is one that needs to be tackled at a regional level and that civil society organizations might need help um, to uh, uh, progress uh, and work together on ideas that uh, support renewable energy solutions in the region. Um, so uh, uh, on that idea, we decided to set up a, a program that aims, uh, ultimately aims at creating a, a renewable energy network uh, for the region uh, under uh, the leadership and, uh, uh, of, of civil society institutions that more or less drive it, and we are being a platform. Um, if you look at the issue of energy, energy in the, not only in the Southeast Asia region, but in general, is, uh, is very highly placed on national development agendas. It's a national topic, and as such, uh, very centralized, uh, driven, um, with um, a very exclusive state affair, if you like, in, in the Southeast Asia region. And it's very difficult for civil society organizations, uh, think tanks, and also academics to bring ideas to, to change that. So to start with that energy network, we came here at the invitation of our headquarters to do a, a renewable energy visitor program to meet with actors in, in, the, in this um, sector. And as part of that visitor program, um, we are also having this public event, which gives you the opportunity to talk to uh, our colleagues and friends from the region about the issues at stake. So um, without further ado, I'd like to um, then hand over to, to our colleagues to go into the issues we would like to discuss. Uh, this evening. So welcome again and enjoy on that evening. Thank you very much, Michael. <laughs> Thank you, Manfred. Take that one. Is that better? Yeah. Um, yeah. Our topic tonight, climate of change. Uh, well, lots of climate talk these days in Germany. COP23, United Nations Climate Conference, is ongoing. And, well, we look at the specific case of Southeast Asia. Where is the struggle and uh, what has been achieved and what's at stake and where 
are the obstacles. That shall be the next 19 minutes for our debate. Um, I want to welcome uh, three of our colleagues that uh, kind of like uh, will be the panel tonight. Welcome with me, Cheng Nui from Green ID. <laughs> Cheng Nui, just uh, join me on the panel. Yeah, and welcome to you as well. <laughs> join me on the second uh, seat. Uh, Cheng Nui is the director of Green ID, uh, Green Innovation and Development Center Vietnam. It's a, the leading Vietnamese civil society organization that promotes renewables and sustainability in the country. Thank you for being with us. Um, that's the next challenge. G Fio Y. Welcome, 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 G. Ji Fio Wai from Myanmar. He works for the Mekong Energy and Ecology Network. I'll, I'll have to get uh, trained with the words. Sorry, but Ji, Ji Fio. Um, it's, his organization deals with large-scale hydropower projects in the Mekong region, which are a key problem to the develop, development of the region, and that's uh, in, especially in Myanmar. Welcome, and thanks for, for being with us. And last... Last but not least, Supakit Nunta Fora Karn. That goes a bit better to my, uh, <laughs> to my reading. Um, Mr. Nunta Fora Karn comes from Thailand and he works as public policy manager for the Healthy Public Policy Foundation, an independent nonprofit social enterprise that specializes on research and training. Welcome. Well, and also from my side, a special group, a uh, special uh, welcome to the group that actually tours this week uh, in Berlin and the region, which comes from Southeast Asia. So that shall be enriching as well and, and uh, being a, uh, a talk amongst colleagues what's happening in the region. Two, three upfront remarks, and then we'll start right away. Our debate will be in English, so that's uh, hopefully welcome for everybody. And uh, it will be broadcasted via live stream, uh, so our ideas will flow hopefully a bit wider and also to your region uh, to, to get others inspired, not just in this room, but also beyond that borders. And last but not least, this is Oscar, and Oscar takes 90 minutes, and then we shall be finished and have a quick wrap up at the at the end so um, we will be doing that having quick statements or let's say statements of our panelists that give us an idea where the energy transition the energy vendor is in their country and kind of what's happening there at the moment and then we will progress and and, and have uh, the audience you putting up questions uh, to whatever comes to your mind to the developments. Just a brief remark to you as an audience, whenever you have questions, I will be running towards you and get you the microphone and just use the microphone for the questions so the live stream is also up to date with what you asked. So let's get started and shift to my panelists. Um, well, there is a timely uh, point in this debate because as I mentioned before, um, we have the COP negotiations uh, in Bonn, which takes the center stage in these, this week. But of, of course, if we talk about the climate of change, we talk also about the climate change and the results that we can see also in the Southeast Asian regions. And if I looked at the news yesterday, I saw the floods in Vietnam taking on, and that's just to name one out of uh, many natural disasters. That kind of show us why we are talking about an energy transition and a decarbonization of um, these societies. But how far have we grown? I mean, when I was reading uh, about uh, Southeast Asia and where the energy transition is at the moment, it struck me that one number, uh, that one number being 117, 117 coal-fired power plants that Indonesia just recently, I think it was, announced that it wants to build until 2025. 117, so what does that mean for the development of a region that is energy hungry for good reasons, because it has kind of like stepped up in its development 
extremely, but it also will need much more energy. And this energy should, if best, and if the COP negotiations really come down to the place, be renewable and be sustainable. So where are we, Cheng Nui, in Vietnam? I'm uh, really nosy to your statements, and they will be accompanied by a couple of pictures. So you have an impression about the developments in Vietnam at the, at the moment. Thank you. Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, I'm very happy to be here with you all, and uh, I would like to say thank to all of you for your time with us. Um, so um, I we it's okay. Okay. So I I would like to stand here so that I can uh, easily share with you about um, our situation in Vietnam. The I would like to tell about the energy story and where we are now. Um, you may see here, um, we, um, in my slide, I will try to cover these three main points. But then um, we will have a more time when we discuss. So uh, I just go very quickly about the situation in Vietnam. We have a great achievement for the uh, energy development. Uh, we say rural electrification program um, up to 2015. Uh, our rural electrification rate is very high, 98%, according to the official statistic. However, it still have a thousand households still without like, electricity from the grid. And um, the, um, the current challenge with us is that how to fit the need of the, these upgrade community with the sustainable energy and also the uh, energy demand increase and it put a lot of challenge for our nation on how we can meet the demand and also um, how we can deal with, the, at the same time, the energy security, but also the increasing the environment and the pollution. Um, so um, it, uh, this is a big question. And also the, the finance, how we can secure the finance to meet the energy demand that uh, we need for the e economy, and um, it's a very big difference now. Is that um, the public finance is um, very like uh, rare, and it needs to mobilize from the private sector. Yeah, this the graph show you how the power mix share, and you will see it highlight in the graph that um, corn is the major share in the power mix, and it also tell you um, how climate. Uh, justice and climate action needs from all of us to support for the transition. And we are a group um, championing the, the, uh, sub the, the effort in Vietnam to support for this transition. We also see that um, it's not easy, but we need to do, otherwise it's too late. So that is, um, you will see here, this picture will tell you how uh, our country will look like with on the coal power plant, if it will be built, you will see from the north to the south. So it will be the disaster for Earth. Uh, that's why we want to change this picture. Uh, then re recently, this area you see here have uh, uh, no coal, only one or two coal power plant, and this also the, uh, the very um, beautiful data and uh, productive data in terms of agriculture, aquaculture, and export uh, for the people. So, um, and they also have a lot of potential for renewable because it's close to the sea and also uh, the radiation is very high. Um, yeah, and uh, according to the national uh, uh, government power planning, the renewable will be increased, but it's not. Um, like uh, fully uh, um, uh, reflect our potential. It's very limited. And we also see some good indicator to show how the nation move uh, in the energy transition. Um, it uh, start with the um, canceling of two first nuclear power uh, project last year. Um, and also um, uh, reduce 20,000 megawatt of coal power from the planning. I think that is the good starting point. However, we still see that the coal power is still a very big share in the power mix. Uh, it's um, 
up to 55,000 megawatt of coal by 2030. It's, it's very uh, like a uh, huge uh, amount. And um, uh, recently, uh, the government start some new e initiative for renewable. The new feed for for solar that um, happened last year, and now it uh, come in, uh, into effective. Um, it creates a very dynamic markets for the solar booming, um, but uh, we see that more on the registration state, not yet on the implementation side. And also, um, our prime minister just uh, delivered a, a quite quite positive message for the limitation, the need. Uh, the urgent need for limitation of building coal power plant in the Mekong Delta and um, um, accelerate the renewable deployment. I think that is very strong message uh, for the different stakeholders um, in the transition. Uh, how, however, we see it, we have a lot of challenge um, for, for us to come with renewable and it's uh, all related to finance, to the technical technology and uh, human resources. But the more important is the, the myth and the fear about renewable. Uh, that is also the area where we're starting now. Uh, um, we have a, a friend from Ufu here. We work together in a, uh, in a project funded by EU to uh, debunk the myth about renewable and build the society capacity on renewable. And yeah, uh, so um, the legal is also important barrier. And um, this is the thing uh, we recognize and we start our work, uh, try to debunk the myth of renewable and we work on, on different view, um, try to eff uh, own the effort to support for the transition of our energy system to uh, the sustainable way. So you see, we work on environment governance, yeah. So we will come back to you later on what we are doing now and what is the achievement over the last five years. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Cheng Fui, uh, Cheng Nui. Um, well, let's fight the myths. And um, I wanted to give you the possibility, if you have questions uh, directly to Cheng Nui, then I would come to you and uh, we'll have a direct intervention of the audience. If you yeah. Yourself, yeah, Peter Reger from Sunboat, so Sun Powered Boats. Um, uh, thank you very much. It's uh, very interesting. And uh, you mentioned uh, uh, that Indonesia will build 107. Uh, yes, okay. Uh, and uh, now you uh, talked as well about uh, the coal power plants. Um, the German side does not finance these power plants anymore. The Asian Development Bank is well not. But the Asian Infrastructure Bank, the Chinese based, they, there is a change in China that they want to reduce the coal power plants, but they finance somewhere else. Like, for example, Indonesia will be financed through them. And uh, that's my question. Is that the same there, that this international finance comes from that Asian infrastructure bank? Or is it... Um, um, and the second question, uh, the, the system for, um, well, in Germany, we have the KFW. They installed this renew, uh, this revolving fund system. Yeah. So I think finance is quite a crucial issue for normal people to, um, so to say, we from the Sunboat side, we want to build it up like that, that bring your money to the bank instead of the petrol station. It, is there something in place in Vietnam already? Just uh, uh, collecting, so we're looking at the pathway of the money. Is there another question directly, or shall we go into... Oh, okay. Just collecting now. Hello, I'm Thuy Tien Do, and thank you very much for sharing the information with us. Um, you've mentioned before that um, in the region it's very crucial to overcome myths and fears um, by the people, so I'm really interested um, what's what's the fears? What are people fearing about um, renewable energy? As we all know, it's actually a good thing for us. But um, yeah, it's quite an interesting uh, point here. Thank you very much. So uh, if you go and start uh, directly, maybe with the path of the money and where it goes to, uh, just take your microphone. That works as well. It's work now. Yeah. OK, thank you. Yeah. So thank you, uh, Peter, for your question. I also agree that finance is crucial 
thing if we want to do transition. And um, yeah, we uh, see that uh, China facing out coal power in their country, but um, they keep continuing support for their industry. And we recognize that um, Southeast Asia now becoming the dumping point for coal power. And um, yeah, we um, uh, see that um, the finance from the um, uh, um, Asia uh, Infrastructure um, Investment Bank is the, the Chinese, is a Chinese government initiative, but it also have um, um, different member and including EU. So uh, the, that is the, we see um, EU have a throne in that uh, uh, the, um, fund, and um, it try to ban for not funding for corn, but uh, in the the language is still vague. It's not clear whether it's like uh, confirmed or not. So I think that is a point we have been trying to advocate for the effort to not including corn in this uh, like finance uh, from the bank. And regarding the revolving fund system in Vietnam, uh, we are looking for different like financing mechanism to support for renewable. And that is uh, also the government um, policy. But um, recently, we are like uh, experiences of how to set up it, and we uh, really need the collaboration from the experienced country like Germany for that. And um, from the EU uh, side, it have a Dragon Capital. It's a private um, uh, group, um, and funding is um, based in Ho Chi Minh City. They also interested in it. Um, but uh, we see that we need to work it out to see how uh, to help both the local um, um, industry, which say the local value chain develop, so that the international and the local cooperation will work out. So that is the, the thing I, I would like to respond if to you. And um, regarding the myth and the fair, I don't know if we have time now. Of course, uh, because I, w I, I was thinking the same. Uh, there are a lot of myths and fears about renewables in Germany as well, so it's interesting uh, still. Yeah, so uh, I think that uh, for that, we can talk for one day or two days. So uh, uh, very quickly, we have a, a publication outside that we work together with Rosa Luxembourg Stiftung last year. And um, in that book, you will find what is the myth and um, the fear. It exists nowadays, not only in Vietnam, but in, so in Germany and in many other countries. And in that, um, we see that the fear is more come from the fossil fuel bay company because they always emphasize that um, corn is the only choice to meet the increasing energy demand. Because corn can meet with uh, like a, a massive number. It's a big capacity. But for renewable, it's small. And it's intermittent. But we have experiences. And in our context, uh, the share of renewable is almost zero nowadays. <laughs> so uh, it doesn't like a um, big match. Uh, for like, um, I think below 10% of renewable in the grid, it doesn't matter. Uh, what is I learned from Agora? And nowadays Germany has increased your management with even more 20%. You still stable the grid. So that is the point, it's always argued by the industry, the corn and the fossil fuel industry. But we try to debank it and uh, I think that uh, it's that, but it needs a lot of effort from different stakeholders, yeah. Thank you very much, Cheng <laughs> And keep on going, fighting the myths. And um, well, I guess uh, we're gonna get back to the case of Vietnam later on, and we'll step now into the case of Myanmar and get to know from GPO Fue uh, a bit uh, more uh, into detail what, uh, yeah, well, the situation in particular, the large-scale hydro, as I uh, initially said, is a big topic but also kind of the question of a, well, a politically and emotionally and economically very vibrant country, which is at the, at the brink of uh, doing a lot of things at the same time. So where, is the, where are the renewables? So good, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, it's like, it's a great honor to be here. And I so thank you very much, the Henry Schwab Foundation, for giving me a chance uh, to share my some experience here. So, um, 
uh, for me, uh, like uh, I'm very much uh, focusing on the directly to the issue based. What is uh, in Myanmar is the phasing the current energy transition and also how we are like uh, going forward like uh, for the renewable energy uh, trends. So we uh, especially like uh, we are uh, when we are talking about like uh, energy like uh, we have a. Uh, uh, facing a lot of like uh, uh, the, the energy project is like a large scale project, especially as a two uh, our main river is a thousand thousand megawatt. I think maybe you might know the one uh, very controversial case study like in New uh, the by the Chinese project. So we have a big big like a, even between the two country we are almost like a uh, nearly like conflict. Uh, so between the two countries, so this is a very hot issue. And also the other thing is like a, uh, not only the large scale projects or the dam, uh, but also the uh, we have a, a lot of uh, uh, coal power project. So all all of these projects are located in the like in Myanmar is the ethnic area. In my country, the all these ethnic area like uh, located by the projects in the civil war zone area. We have uh, more than one hundred ethnic armed group in Myanmar fighting with the Myanmar military government between. So, so a lot of problems happening now like uh, as, uh, because of all these projects. So, and also like uh, we don't have a, even like uh, we have a, the transboundary river called the San Luis is uh, between China, Myanmar, and Thailand. Uh, also like uh, a lot of problems happen. So this is the Myanmar, Myanmar power sector reality. We are the we Myanmar is the one of the lowest like uh, electrification rate in in the world also the, in the region about 30 to 35 percent uh, electrification is a is a connect to the grid. So the second like uh, we have a, like a majority of the nearly 70 percent as an off grid area. So but this area is a, we have a, a lot of potential. Also people people know electricity not really like electricity but we are using our own way, like uh, solar, biomass, and small scale, many, many uh, mini hydro, lots of projects. These are our good strength, like uh, we, can, we can see these are very much potential how to we encourage and promote this area. The, the other thing is, a, is a, this is a big challenge for our country is the IPP, uh, independent power projects of our SPAR. So we, we really like, uh, you see like uh, only hydropower, 46,000 megawatt, they are planning being to produce uh, to generate the electricity, but almost all are planning to sell in the neighboring country. We are the energy hungry country, but you see, like uh, we have to like uh, produce a lot of energy not for our country. Uh, we, now we we uh, we have a installed capacity only uh, like uh, more than five thousand megawatt, but we're using only three thousand megawatt only. So you, you compare like, a, so these are all like a, uh, not only the hydropower project, but also like a, uh, also like a, how to say the coal project as well. It's the main river basin. And this is in, uh, the huge, huge project of the hydropower in the, uh, the uh, San Luis River. It's a transboundary river, it's a China. So, so all these project area in, in the like ethnic area, it's, it's a civil war area. So you see like uh, here, like uh, we have another idea is the uh, uh, Greater Mekong, like uh, uh, how do you say, Greater Mekong, like a uh, uh, transmission line project. This is like, uh, you see all the project in Myanmar located going out, like uh, So you, uh, all the, we used to stay in Myanmar, like uh, this river is sailing to India, this river is sailing to China, this is sailing to the <laughs> another thing that we say like this. So, so we have a big question for this. So who needs what energy? So we always facing like this. Even as so we have a very, uh, very old hydropower project, as a, a, a four decades ago, and then in this area is also the ethnic area. Many of the people in this area that they don't have electricity. So all you need like a transmission line going to the city, and almost our projects are going to China and in Thailand. So uh, we have, a, like I mentioned, the, the big, big, the biggest hydropower project by China. So we have a, a lot of criticism for this. And 
I think in, in our civil society uh, history, uh, we 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 saying like uh, we win, like uh, we unite everything, and like uh, uh, and also the China is like a. Uh, very much like uh, they, they got the lesson learned in, in history. They never have a lesson learned. This one like uh, is uh, our in country. So uh, I will kiss this one. <laughs> so the another case theory also there is a large dam project in the ethnic area also. Uh, a lot of problem and also you see like uh, here like uh, we have a lot of ethnic end group here. Uh, I and like uh, a few a few years ago like uh, in the, the, the Chinese like uh, Engineer and the worker in this area, like uh, they have like uh, they are killed, but uh, no one know who killed like uh, who, like uh, killing these people. So a lot of risky and you see like uh, a lot of problem happen. Also, this area has uh, not only the much much more than the energy issue. They already like uh, destroying the like uh, water share and uh, the logging. A lot of thing happen. Uh, Dress so. So like uh, we have to like uh, we have uh, in in society we used to say like big big question the energy development for who who gained who lost so that we are like a uh, shouldering a loss of like a uh, burden like uh, people have to be suffering so we have a uh, for because of like a uh, we have another reason like a uh, fighting between the ethnic and group and the, the military also the the projects also trigger a lot of more like a tension and conflict between like a, so now we, we produce the refugee, <laughs> something like this, and also the fleeing to the, the neighboring, the Thailand, we have a hundreds of thousands of refugees staying there. Also the, the, the development project is also part of this. So something like this. So, so for the like a alternative option, yes, we have a, we have a option a lot. Yama is a very rich in uh, natural resource and very much alternative option in, in Myanmar. So, so we have a like a clean and green uh, like a idea a lot, and also the technology is now like a very much around us and like a easily. And uh, we we have a lot of like a potential or small scale, middle scale, the, like a um, environmental friendly like a electrification uh, system like a, we have a. Something also we also have a, a, a people participation is a quite strong in this like a rural electrification area. So we also have a in, in, in locally we have a technology appropriate technology like a biomass technology solar or like a other like a mini hydro we already have. But the government is never encouraged. For example, like if the grip came to this area, so all the these existing uh, like uh, the small scale and medium scale are all, all gone. So uh, in Myanmar, like uh, we, uh, our, our like uh, planner is like this. They always want to, want to big, want to big, want to big. They, uh, they never think about like, sustainable and also how to conserve like uh, environment. So like uh, we, we are like this. So thank you very much for, for your, for you, pay attention. Do you just say, just stay there, or what, no? If you, if you want, yeah. Thank you very much. It's about big central and versus decentralized. Do you have questions directly to who? Some questions directly. If, uh, the colleague from already. Yeah. Thank you very much. And a little question or a little advice. There was one. A uh, slide with uh, this energy saving bulbs, yeah. Um, I only realized uh, recently in Indonesia, I told someone these lights on the left side in the oh, middle, yeah. Yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Do you know that they are very dangerous because people in Indonesia and Philippines, at least, they don't know that. Really? So they are promoted as energy saving lamps, but. Sorry, it's it's dangerous. I I I oh, it, it's okay. Anyway, in the next slide, you mentioned that there is biomass to gas, and and in terms of uh, climate, you know, biomass is mm -hmm. something valuable. I think so. So the question is, if you burn it in gasification or you create additional yeah. Um, yeah, impact on the climate, maybe there is a better sense 
or a better meto methodology to shift it to other things like, for example, I heard, or there is a project to, to use this biomass mm -hmm. into something valuable for animals or insect protein or something. So instead of this one, maybe there is something better to use for, for the, the stomach yeah? Yeah. to eat. And is there something in place? Or do you, do you have these already, these systems, to change biomass into something valuable like insect protein, not to create additional impact on climate? Okay, got that. Uh, just is there one more question? Okay. Oh, excuse me. <laughs> Didn't see that. Um, I'm Yasmin Dervish, and actually, I just returned from Myanmar. I lived there four and a half years. I was a general counsel lately for an American telecom company, and we were building telecom towers throughout the country. So I know the difficulties. Inofficially, we met the um, ethnic armed groups, but in this country, and that's why I'm always sorry to hear in any development project or being here and talking about renewable energies. This country is not far, you can't compare it to Vietnam or Thailand. You don't have any infrastructure. You have very, very poor people not getting any additional foreign investment because they may be average $2 more expensive than Bangladesh and certain things. You need to know where this country is and see it as a global. I expected to hear here when you speak about renewable energy, within the economical development of this country, is it worthwhile to do it? Solar projects, we try to get solar on our towers because there's no grid. But solar needs maintenance. Maintenance needs money. Maintenance means you need infrastructure and you have to be able to go there. And you have to be allowed to go there. So. Renewable energy, you can't see it solely. It's not a working country. You need to see it in the context of where Myanmar is. And you can't see it broadly, and you can't compare it to the neighboring countries who get most of the gas via yes. bilateral agreements. Yes. Nothing remains almost for Myanmar. It basically has contradicting regulation, which says, first, the country, the new foreign um, investment law, should get gas. But you have previously signed bilateral agreements saying all the gas has to go out. So um, I would like to hear from all panelists. We all support it, especially in the first world, right? Renewable energy. But how is it for the poor person who likes it to be involved and have an employment when a hydro power station is built, right? They live from it. They send their children to school, which they can't do before. And how? Where is that? Where is that covered with if you say no to to the usual bad things? Thank you very much for the critical remark. Do you want to, Gifo, do you want to yeah, uh, answer? For, for, for the, uh, like, uh, the, 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 the gentleman. So we let this one, like, uh, because we already, like, uh, in the, the Ogre area, we already use this kind of thing, like, uh, Two decades already is a, is a, a little fine to the many many like a village and also many town. It's a, a, a apart from like a, we don't have a, like a grip. So it's a, already like a like a, how to say like a, a contribute a lot to the many uh, community. And the, also we have a we also violence. have a uh, like a, the better technology now, like a locally. But of course we really need the like a technical assistant from like a, to improve the more like a gasification. We, we all know like a, the, the, the situation of the gas, gasification power plant, a lot of problem, but result is like a, we have a lot of right health gasification a lot. So that we need to improve for this one. And also the, uh, the one like, a, uh, like a even solar is a little, is people saying like a expensive. I think in, in Myanmar, like a, the whole country, like a, we using like a, the so, like solar, solar is the main one, like uh, the throughout the countryside, like uh, using a lot. But okay, like uh, even like uh, the the quality is not uh, quality is not good, but still like uh, okay, people using a lot. And also like uh, we, uh, I I met with the uh, company or the, the solar company, big big solar company. Now I think in the in the in the country the middle part like a uh, planning two or three like a uh, solar fan. It's a large scale one like a. Uh, 100 or 100, uh, 200 uh, solar fan. It's like it's going to be 
uh, like the, I think in the, the one is like going to be uh, uh, started in next year, and the other is the following. That means like uh, we already discussed with them. It's a uh, technically no problem. We can like uh, connect to the grid, but always like uh, uh, like uh, the MOE, like uh, our main like uh, like uh, uh, how to say the Ministry of Energy, and say, no, they are not like uh, oh renewable is a uh, no stable and no base load. But we met with the company and say no. We can make it. So technology, uh, technically, we can make it. So we, we are like a, I see like a, we have a very good potential for this. Just just take on board the, the second question, maybe. Pam? Can I please answer one? Um, yeah, yeah, maybe. And then uh, just real briefly. As for the, you know, one people say that poor people cannot afford renewable energy. I don't. Believe it, because in Myanmar there are already, according to the 2010 government data, we have about more than 17,000 mini grids and off grids in Myanmar, and then out of that, 7,000 are renewable, 5,400 mini hydros, and more than 12, 1,200 biogas, biomass. Biomass is the is using for the 90 percent of the rice mills in Irrawaddy Delta. Okay, just introduce yourself. Uh, my name is Pipi Then. I used to work with the Mekong Ecology and Energy Network before. Thank you very much for that quick intervention and maybe some brief uh, kind of answers, really brief answers to that question. Is that just a dream or is maintenance and kind of like uh, uh, the question of can we actually afford uh, that kind of stuff? Is that hindering, blocking? Maybe uh, Suna, yeah, if, if you just ask and uh, if you just uh, answer. <laughs> Uh, no, just on that question, and then we'll we'll get back to it. if you if you just ask on that. Uh, so answer. maybe I can contribute briefly. Firstly, uh, and also in my slide, renewable energy is a uh, first. I may answer this. When when you consider energy, it's like you need to compare apple to apple. If you do not, you need you need more electricity. If you do not generate it from biomass gasification, if you do not invest in solar or other renewable energy, coal power plant will come. Large hydro power will come. It's not just that we try to find the perfect answer, and then until then that we will start generating electricity. It's not like that. It's a hundred. 10 and 100 of coal power plant, even nuclear power plant projects, even large hydro power plant projects that we will relocate thousands, hundreds, on thousands, if not million people in, in our region will come if we do not really serious to develop these small, small renewable energy projects. And, what's, and your answer on the, what's your answer on the job question, Sumpakit? Uh, the job question that um, actually you take away the jobs of the coal power plants. What would be your answer on that? Uh, it's both the, the general picture and we also learn during this trip that you need to go into detail. So first, uh, we learned that actually renewable energy create in, in, in proportion create much more, many more jobs compared to fossil fuel or, or large uh, power plant project. During construction, yes, maybe one or two or three years seems to be a lot of job. But after that, all these large power plant not really employ a lot. It's all technology that, that you pay for. But for renewable energy, yes, uh, it's create more, many more jobs. And also, even we do not, for example, solar PV, there is a myth that if you don't, do not produce solar cell by your country, you, generate, you, you create very little job, which is not true. And uh, for the maintenance path for solar PV, now there are many, I would say, 10 or even 100 local communities in Thailand that they have opportunity to learn now they provide installation and services on small-scale solar PV for water pumping for agricultural purpose, for solar light, pole, or other. So it's, uh, we always learn that solar PV is not rocket science. It's not so advanced that lay people <laughs> cannot touch. Actually, within half a year or even one year from, for many local communities in Thailand, they can learn, they can install, they can maintain, provide simple maintenance of this system. Uh, 
so but Baki, just stay there for a second. I'll give a hand over that question because I think it's an important one just to Cheng Nui for real briefly, if you take uh, your microphone. Um, and then you'll start with your presentation. Yeah. Just a brief answer on that question. Is there a maintenance issue? Is there uh, a job creation issue that would be taken away? Yeah, thank, uh, thank you. Just, just, uh, just speak. Just speak. It okay. If, if um, so um, I, I want to uh, very quickly respond to the point of the job and also whether the poor can, sub, uh, can afford renewable. Um, today, in our like uh, project site in uh, Highland Center, sorry, we uh, bring a group of media come to the village that uh, is exists there for 20 years, but without power from the grid. And when the local uh, energy agency estimate the budget, it come up with okay, four billion uh, Vietnam dong. I don't know how to translate it in <laughs> in, in Euro, uh, but uh, uh, we see all. Oh, and uh, with with that calculation, the grid never come, and uh, they will never have a power for 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 their like daily life. So we come there, we work with them, and then we come up with a system. Now it operates, and um, they can pay for it with uh, I think ten times cheaper than the price. Of course, we support for a part, but we want to show a model. I agree that it depends on the condition, but we see that in almost the upgrade community nowadays, the like renewable solution is much more cheaper uh, because we need to calculate the cost for the whole system because we have to pay for it, not only uh, like uh, the, the consumer in the rural, in the, in the upgrade side. That is the first point I want to mention. And the second point is that um, job, yeah. You say, okay, doing hydropower, doing coal power, create a lot of job, but that is the myth for many local um, uh, area in Vietnam nowadays. Uh, when the company come with a permit that this project will create a lot of job for people, but as the uh, super kids said, it's just only in the construction phase. And it's very temporary job. And then the local lost their land without job in the future. And we visit many like community people said that I have a lot of money, but I'm hungry of job. Mm. So that is my answer. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, thanks a lot. And uh, I'll I'll guess uh, we're going to come back to that question later on again, and uh, let's hand over to Supakit and his introduction to the case in Thailand. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, thank you, Halichbo Foundation, for having me here and to share with you within a brief uh, time about the struggle for renewable energy in Thailand. So just uh, some basic about our power generation. So we mainly natural gas, some lignite, some coal, but we already achieved 8% of renewable energy, renewable electricity. So compared to other countries in the region, Thailand seems to be the leader <laughs> about renewable energy. And for the national power development plan for the next about 20 years, we will increase from 8% to 25%. And actually, the present government is uh, revising the national power development plan again, and they may come out, come, come up with even 40% in uh, 20 years. So it's a really good story. So what are we struggle about renewable energy in Thailand? That's what I want to share with you, three main points. So the first that we struggle for renewable energy is actually the priority of energy options in the uh, overall energy policy and planning of the country. So for the Power Utility Ministry of Energy and also the government, the prime minister, in, in, in short, renewable energy is undeniable in the long term. They say it's good, they accept it, they promote it. But important co in, important co is so crucial for power development of the country now. So when you talk about 20 year time frame into the future, we will have mu much more renewable energy. But now, they really put all the effort 
to build coal-fired power plant in Thailand. This is the, the key discourse. So it's a lot of advertisement and the whole, the, when, when you ask that, the, what's about the general public of Thailand? So they hear a lot, renewable energy is expensive, renewable energy is unreliable. They even uh, make uh, a lot of public communication, advertisement in all the channel. I know you cannot read Thai. So I summarize in, in English that coal power plant is reliable, and they also show that wind is not, not reliable, biogas, solar, mini hydro, it's all. You cannot rely on it. Also, coal power plant has low cost per kilowatt hour, and actually it based on really fraud assumption of this calculation, but the general public cannot really understand in the detail. So the general public here every day, coal is cheap, coal is the future. Yes, from the power utility. It's a electricity generating, uh, it's, it's a governmentally owned enterprise. So our struggle for renewable energy in Thailand is what uh, this uh, slide that we use a lot back in Thailand and also link, link to your question. This is a case of uh, a province in the southern part of Thailand that has a lot of palm oil. I'm sure some of you do not know about palm oil, but it has a lot of biomass and biogas. And at present, farmer in the province they use electricity, so they pay for electricity to the authority, and then they sell uh, palm oil to the, to the factory. What is missing in this uh, picture is that actually the wastewater can be, uh, can be put in a biogas system, and then they can generate electricity from biogas. Also, biomass potential is uh, a lot within one, one province. So if the government allow, <laughs> open that the uh, palm oil factory can sell. From wastewater, you can generate electricity that create a lot of value added. And from the it's palm oil residual, that you do not use it for anything. Okay, you will put it back to the land. But from the biogas and biomass, you also get the fertilizer that you can put it back to the land again and also you get energy, renewable energy out of that. So that's create a lot of value added every year, including uh, reduced greenhouse gas emission. So we calculate for consideration that if the government allow this uh, renewable energy to be able to sell to the grid, it can increase the, the income of palm oil farmer in the province about more than 25% increase in income. Only if, if the government allow the wastewater and the palm residual to be, to be able to generate electricity and sell to the grid. And we compare this to the coal power plant project that's proposed by the power utility ECAT. So all the money will, is imported coal from Indonesia and Australia. So all the money that we pay for electricity, a big part will go to coal mine in Indonesia and Australia. And it's a lot of money every year. And 25 years of the, of the lifetime of the power plant is 4.5 billion euro that will go out of the country because we focus on imported coal. And a lot of uh, Pollution, greenhouse gas emission, another six million ton per year, every year, and also other kinds of pollution. And if you ask further question, who own the coal mine in Indonesia and Australia? Actually, it's Thai company. <laughs> the governmentally owned enterprises like ECAT is here, and also Petroleum Authority of Thailand, with the uh, Banpu is uh, the, the largest coal private company in Thailand. So they own a lot of coal mine and also coal power plant in other countries. The second struggle that we are facing is about problems on uh, renewable energy policies. 
So before I go into details, okay. Uh, the the electricity structure in Thailand is an enhanced single buyer model. So ECAT is the sole buyer of electricity. It's the opposite of unbundled model that you have in Germany. So generating and grid system operator is under the same organization. And no priority access, no obligation to purchase electricity from renewable energy. It's all under the control of ECAT. So far, the policy on solar PV has been rent-seeking policy, which is a kind of corruption. How, did, how we end up in this situation? First, the quant quantity is controlled for selling to the grid by quota system. The ministry will open maybe 100 megawatt this year. Next year, they may not allow any selling from solar PV at all. Another year, maybe 200 megawatt. Second, price is setting by a minister. It's a political actor that determines the price. It's not the transparent mechanism to set the price. And all the burden will go to electricity tariff. So if the minister set the price too high, he does not have to be responsible for anything. It will go to electricity tariff. And the approval and permission process may take long time, depending on judgment of the authority. All this together create rent-seeking policy. Also, another big problem is the, the National Energy Policy Council is the supreme energy policy mechanism in Thailand. The council made decision in 2015, just stop buying electricity from all renewable energy. Just stop. So the private, uh, the, it's the case of palm oil factory that invest in the biogas. They are ready to generate electricity, and then you are not allowed to sell electricity. So now they have to burn the biogas. Just burn it, because you cannot you cannot sell electricity to the grid. This is the the the, the second thing that we struggle. Lastly. It's the problem of the institution and governance. So this is example of linkages between governmentally owned enterprise like ECAT and also the Petroleum Authority of Thailand. With the private company, the coal company, and even the TEPCO is a Japanese company who own a Fukushima nuclear power plant, a lot of coal power plant. So the joint venture, they have crossed, oh, a lot of uh, projects, a lot of uh, power plant is natural gas, solar, uh, even the coal power plant. So it's a lot of linkages. And we have this problem that uh, many high level staff of Ministry of Energy, they are the board of the governmentally owned enterprises and their subsidiary. And when you are the board, you earn a meeting allowance and bonus in a big amount of money. Actually, it's more comparable or more than the salary of public servants position. So there have been high leaks and also cases of conflict of interest of this high level. And I, due to the time limitation, maybe I, 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 I can skip this, and then I can end my presentation here, and then we can continue over the discussion. Thank you, Thank very, you much. very much. Thank you very much, Sipaki. Just stay. <laughs> Thank you. I got, I got from the uh, chart that there are a lot of linkages and a lot, lot of issues that could be dealt with. Are there any questions in um, directly targeting that kind of presentation? Okay, oh, <laughs> maybe maybe there are two more uh, issues. Okay, I think um, if if uh, we don't have direct questions, uh, maybe or maybe over there. Um, Sadika, my name is Warawan. Um, I'm from just came um, to Germany. Um, so my question is that I've seen so far the policy on renewable energy for the Thai government 
is actually very fluctuated based on the political um, power um, in Thailand. So I am actually curious, um, and what, what is your opinion, why the military government at the moment would like to increase the goal up to 40%, um, which is actually more dramatic than the previous um, civil government that already has been heavily criticized that is ambitious, like too ambitious. So mm -hmm. I um, maybe you can um, clarify on that. Thank you. And just collect one more. Here, here was another question. Um, okay. The back there. Okay. <laughs> Don't want to. Yeah. Thank you once more. Uh, once more. Um, so I'm, I'm as well a little confused uh, because you mentioned that in 2015 this EGAT and the NEPC they did not allow anymore to to so put any renewable energies in the grid. So and now it's in conflict. First, signing the the Paris Agreement. Second, uh, the forty percent, yeah. So, and then, is there any? I mean, how is it in Thailand? Is there any awareness of a smaller group of people who say, "Hey, this is," who fight for that, or who advocate or stand up or see that these problems? Is there any any motion for that, or uh, how do you see that all these conflict lines? Thank you very much. Uh, so resistance and uh, basically the question about is it way too ambitious, those 40 percent? Mm -hmm. Me, sorry, then maybe I, I, I talk too fast. So now I, I will try to make it clear. Firstly, the 40 percent is still the, the case. It's not the, the formal plan yet. So they may 25 percent in the next 20 years or increase to 40 percent as we heard. But to share my opinion is that because they are milit now in Thailand, we have military government. <laughs> so they want to have a good image in international arena, like uh, when, you, when uh, next week that our Minister of Environment will come to the COP in Bonn. They want to have a good image, good, good position. So as I put in my first uh, struggle, Thai government will say that, oh, we support renewable energy. Renewable energy is good. Renewable energy is the future. But that's the long term, 20 years from now, slowly and slowly. But inside the country, it's coal. They put all the effort, advertisement, everything is about coal. They will not say that we do not want renewable energy, but it's the priority that the, the other people in other countries may not know that, okay, they support renewable, they go for coal. But inside the country, it's really the priority that's really clear that they, they really support coal. So can I, can I just add on the question of this, uh, is there demonstration or is, are there protests against mm -hmm. kind of like this coal policy? Just because you mentioned the Krabi province with mm -hmm. the biomass uh, that is actually lacking, the biomass plant. Just recently or kind of like in this um, spring, there were protests in exactly that Krabi region mm -hmm. where fishermen and local um, activists yeah. actually got rid mm -hmm. of a power of the plants of a coal power plant, mm -hmm. uh, coal fired power plant that actually should have been built. The minister kind of like the government was heavily supporting it. And then it actually was put on hold because of that fierce resistance. Yes. Is there kind of like a, a real change in atmosphere? So to your question, uh, yes, there are a lot of uh, protests against large, large scale power plant project, not only coal, even a uh, large hydropower project in the past, and also Thai government want to have a nuclear power in, in the future. So some local people in the, air, in the target area, they try to learn about the good and the bad thing of nuclear power and start to mobilize themselves. So yes, we, uh, they are resistant to large scale power plant project because it's an it's a information era that we know that renewable energy is cheaper and cheaper. A lot of community, s small and medium enterprises working on renewable energy. So now it's like a, a, in many areas of the country, renewable energy is, is developing. But the policy, 
is cold. <laughs> they do not want the, the uptake of renewable energy now. Maybe after they build five or ten coal power plant projects, then renewable energy can come in, something like that. But the, for the, the case of Krabi province in the southern part of Thailand, it's really interesting because it's not only local people that go to the protest, it's the provincial chamber of commerce that actually disagree with the coal power plant project. The provincial tourism council, Krabi is famous uh, after Phuket for, for tourism. So even the, the private sector, the, the association of private businesses in the province, they support renewable energy, then they are actually against coal-fired coal power plant projects. Thank you very much. Uh, um, I'll uh, take back the seat on the, on, on the stage. And uh, I think we're going to have like 10 uh, minutes of uh, quick interaction here on the panel. And then we'll have some final roundups from you, from the audience. And I have to be uh, frankly saying I'm a bit puzzled in the sense that when I looked at the case studies of Vietnam, Myanmar, and Thailand, I think they're extremely different. I mean, uh, you, you basically uh, hardly can see any lines that kind of connect the dots in between those countries. And I, I was thinking there, there is this, this plan of getting the carbon-free energy development network, like civil society actors going cross-border, cooperating in promoting, well, getting rid of fossils and getting rid or get kind of promoting renewables. But how can that take place? I was, I was really kind of like um, asking myself, how would that cross-border cooperation look like in real practical takeoff? Maybe Cheng Nui. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Um, so because of the time limitation, so we could not highlight the similarity of our Asian country, but you may easily fall to the three presentations that uh, rely on coal power and on large scale power plant is the, the, similar, the first similarity uh, in both the three cases. And I think also with the other Philippines, Indonesia, and the other South Asia country, uh, we all recognize that um, South Asia become the reason where a lot of like uh, business and also uh, planning for coal power plant. And um, that we see uh, that um, to make happen this coal power plant, it need to link to the finance. And it back to the question about who provide finance for it. And we see there are some key player for this uh, project is uh, the Chinese bank, or the, the, um, the Chinese investment. And the second is the Japanese uh, finance. And the third one is the Koreans. So these three major like finance provider have a uh, like uh, influence role in the uh, coal power uh, building and uh, market in the Southeast Asia country, and um, uh, that is the, the the second. I think the third point we we see the similarity that uh, many mistake has been happened in Thailand twenty years ago now repeat in the other country. So, uh, what, what kind of mistakes? I think, like, okay, the impacts on the local livelihoods and also uh, the destroys of the environment and the air pollution uh, is uh, happened and it increasingly, uh, if on this coal power plant, uh, can be built. So, um, we also see that maybe our friend from Myanmar have a more maybe specific case because it's related to the peace. But uh, we see that uh, recently, even in our context, we have no like um, uh, law on the demonstration. But it happened. A big very demonstration happened uh, with uh, one cone firepower plant. Because the, the, the local people cannot suffer the dust from the, the construction of the cone power plant. And all of them, even they try very peacefully, uh, like, proposal or request to the local government to do something, but even they cannot have uh, the solution. So they have to, to protect themselves by going 
uh, own go together to the national road. So that is a similarity. It makes us um, seeing that we need to learn from each other. We need to work together. And uh, we cannot like uh, work alone uh, on national like transition. But we can bring in the internet, the regional case. That help for the nation. That is the reason why we come together, connect different dots, and forming a network. So maybe my friend will add more. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thank you, Jenny. Maybe Jiu uh, uh, if you add on, what what are the connecting dots for you? Um, for me, like uh, we 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 learn a lot of lesson in the in the even in the domestic Cape, we built a lot of hundreds of dam in in Myanmar, and also but many of them are not working, and even the government they committed, they confessed, they said, okay. Uh, more than half of the this projects uh, like uh, they has uh, is uh, nothing nothing mean like uh, they are they are not for the people they just doing for like uh, the military like uh, it, they said they used to say the like uh, or oh, they they beat the dam every one man so it's a uh, very much it's uh, related to the correction and also we also have uh, another uh, lesson learned for the co project we have a uh, two like uh, a co project even like uh, uh, technically, like uh, even the one uh, very controversial pro big uh, coal project, 120 megawatt, but efficiency less than 20 megawatt. You see, like uh, how the, the 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 real situation, and also the another like a uh, coal power plant, only eight megawatt, but the, the real generation only less than one megawatt. So you see, so we, we know the situation. So it's about fighting yeah, myths as well. Yeah, yeah, we, we already see the, the, the situation in mixed state. And also uh, the, the idea now, in like the, the, the transboundary uh, region is uh, uh, trying to like uh, create the, the energy market. But in Myanmar, we have a lot of resource, but we really don't need, uh, uh, as a market, we don't, we don't see like uh, who, who's selling, the, who the driver. So even Thailand, they, they already surplus. 100% sublet, maybe more 40% around, but they still need they still need the energy energy. So they want to bid more and more. So that's the idea. I think even I saw like a ASEAN. I I, I don't see a really functioning well. They are like it's always like a as a very top down like a uh, no intervention between each country something like that. So I I think it's it's not working well uh, in my opinion. So Pakit, what are the connecting dots for you? Sure. Uh, I totally agree with my colleague, and I want to add another important similarity in our region. We have so much potential for renewable energy. We have a lot of sun. Wind, Thailand may not so strong, but Vietnam and even Myanmar is really a lot. Biomass, we are all <laughs> agricultural country. We do not need to put effort. Tree can grow by itself every second. We have a lot of waste. We have a lot of biogas potential. We have a lot of potential for mini and micro hydropower. So how to turn potential into reality? First, you wait for the government, <laughs> the utility to develop. Second, you wait for the business, the big one or the small one to come. And third, you may start to learn and do it by yourself. Maybe we need all of this in order to achieve in the long term. But what we will do after we go back from, from Germany, back to our country, we can start by ourselves and we can share that local community, the small enterprise in Thailand can do this and small enterprises in, in Vietnam can do that and then we can share and then we start. We open for business world the good guy, and also the government if, uh, if they come together. But we, we do not want to wait and see. We want to start the action by, by ourselves. Real commitment. Yeah. Um, just, OK. <laughs> I think uh, one more reason is important when it related to our network is the carbon emission. Um, because we, we all know that every about 200 countries come together to bond. Yeah? And uh, own uh, like uh, negotiate, and also I think as I know everyone agree that we need to limit the like uh, temperature increasing to below two degree. And if so, uh, own coal power plant have to be 
start uh, phasing out. No more new coal power plant. So that is the reason why I see that uh, we need to work together, not only like us as a developing country, but the uh, developed country uh, need to work together with developing country. If we want to, to work together that is, uh, to, to for the reason that we don't want that uh, our like um, reason become uh, the biggest emission. Thank you very much. That flows nice to my last question before then I go back to the audience. Um, um, I learned up front that, uh, that there was a common target of all ASEAN countries uh, of 23% renewable energy by the year 2025. And I learned as well up front that uh, the word 100% renewable is sometimes, even these days, really spoken in the Southeast Asian countries a lot, even more, as I learned. And uh, I learned that uh, there are a lot of uh, guidelines being drawn up for biomass, wind, solar, and, uh, well, governments are taking short, medium, and long-term goals. So on the, on the very upfront, even the political side is moving a bit, even if we have seen that at the heart, as you nicely said, there's also, there's always and still the coal issue. But I was wondering, um, is that is that a trigger to kind of like uh, push for change? Because in Germany and in other countries and at the negotiations in Bonn, they're talking a lot about targets and uh, kind of like debate how to reach that target. But when I listened to your talk and uh, tank, your interventions, most uh, most uh, were targeting real practical solutions that actually would convince people and uh, afterwards governments. So what's the way? Is it, is it more like actually giving showcases on the ground or is it also kind of like looking at targets? What's your position on that? Yeah, I can start because uh, uh, there is a, a publication by ASEAN Center for Energy that even ASEAN agree for this 23% uh, target but if you look at the, the formal national development plan of our country, we will not reach that target. So many countries in ASEAN need to actually revise their own power development plan in order if they really want to achieve that target. So it's more like uh, the, the, the direction that we will go, not the really the, the target that we will achieve. Uh -huh. That's that from my own opinion. And then for the COP in Bonn, I would say for Thailand and also to make it more clear, the target that we agree under Paris Agreement is the, from my own opinion, is not ambitious as, at all. We will achieve it. We have a lot more potential to do more than that, but Thai government set the target in the safe zone and then submit to the Paris Agreement, and it's okay. So just uh, last, last week, that UNEP actually launched, and this link to why we need to cooperate with each other, not only in Southeast Asia, but globally, because if you consider Paris Agreement, it will not, it's only one third of the needed effort if we want to limit the, the, the increased uh, temperature. So we need another two thirds Paris Agreement is a very really good starting, but clearly not enough. So uh, for, for the government, that's one, one story that we can try. But uh, we can learn a lot, especially from Germany, about renewable energy and from other countries that is possible, is reliable, is provide a lot of benefit, not only electron that you will use as electricity, is provide many other things. And with this kind of cooperation, we hope to really limit <laughs> climate change in reality and also providing, providing various benefits from energy development, not producing refugee, but producing real benefit, especially for poor people and marginalized people. Chiu uh, Piu, how is, how is it in Myanmar, how to get on, on track, uh, that kind of renewable <coughs> really on the ground? Um, uh, because like uh, we have uh, like uh, 2030, we have a, a national energy master plan. So they put like in uh, like a renewable energy is a nine percent, 
And very recently, I heard about that, like, uh, it's a very high uh, official saying, like, uh, this is not the official, official came out yet. They said, like, uh, no, 9%. They want to increase 30%. So that you see, this is what's the, the, the like, uh, the war and the global is going, the trend is, you cannot avoid it at all. And also, I heard about from the Thailand also, they, they are not encouraging the renewable energy a lot, but, but uh, surprisingly, very recently, they said, oh, 20 to like 30, 35% something. So you see, so you, uh, the situation, you cannot avoid it. You have to, you have to change. So what is it like uh, you are better like, uh, uh, how did the society and the, 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 the sustainable future, I think. Cheng Nui. Um, so uh, before the talking about how we like uh, approach, uh, I want to make a clear point here. We need to uh, make clear what we consider renewable. Because in Vietnam, um, large-scale hydropower were not considered as renewable by the government. So if uh, yeah, we, we need to make clear for that, because otherwise it will be mixed up. Uh, so if like um, we consider la uh, rene uh, hydropower is a renewable, Vietnam uh, have quite a lot of renewable in the power mix already. Uh, but we see here at uh, like uh, environment and also justice, and we see that the uh, high last gen hydropower is not. So um, for us, we see that um, our government as uh, uh, in the like uh, heading in the positive way. Uh, of increasing um, uh, more renewable from solar, from wind, from biomass. Uh, but we see that um, the, the paper work and the reality is still have a lot of gap. And what we are trying to do from civil society is that we um, first um, target to, to increasing the awareness and the support from the public on um, what is the benefits and we say core benefits of renewable, uh, besides the electricity, electricity, what is job creation, what is the environmental reduction, especially for air. We will work on this with our friend from IASS in the new project. But uh, in fact, we start the discussion already. Um, we need to convene the public to move uh, to the clean side. And secondly, we also uh, work on the policy side. We uh, follow and also um, conducted our independent analysis on the target, on the scenario, to really show what is the different scenario the government need to consider. And um, uh, we do not limit it only on to that level, uh, public awareness raising or also target advocacy, but we demonstrate the solution on the community. We combine those things together and have a media come in to really communicate. That is the way we do. And uh, at the regional level, we link with different organizations working on the same topic and also working on the climate so we can, I think, amplify the effort and, and also convene um, uh, the government. So that is the way we do. Thank you, Cheng Nui. And uh, yeah, working on the climate of change. Um, looking at Oscar, I think it's uh, 7.30, but we started a bit later, so I think there will be two more uh, or three more questions uh, uh, that we have the time to. So if ever there will be some question, just introduce yourself. Yeah, my name is Ingrid Nestle. I'm a member of parliament in Germany. And uh, so I have a question to all, all three of you. Uh, maybe you know that at the moment uh, we are discussing about forming a new government and uh, the Green Party is a part of these discussions and one of our main points is uh, to close down some coal fire power plants um, to meet our climate targets. And um, my question is really, um, um, the other parties that we're discussing, well, actually they had the same climate targets, it's their climate targets, and it's the climate targets that we have given to the EU and the EU to the COP, so it's like our COP climate targets. But so there's kind of a tendency now to say, oh, but now it's too late, it's 2020 targets and 2017, and the new government will start in 2018, and legislation that's 2019, and then probably it's too late, so let's just forget about it. And we say, well, no, it's our target, and we have to meet it, and those, we can close down coal-fired power plants before 2020, 
Um, and this is an important international signal. And I was just wanted to ask to you whether this is true, whether I can report this to our partners, or maybe a few of our partners or not, uh, whether you think that it does matter whether we meet these targets or you know, just miss them and maybe meet them four years later or maybe not. Um, so, uh, yeah. Because, of course, they say, oh, and the Germany is so small, and Indonesia are building so many f power plants, so it probably doesn't matter whether we take them out or not, which, um, yeah, I just uh, want to uh, uh, collect your opinion on that. And uh, my second question is um, because um, um, you said something about the European Union being involved in the financing of coal-fired power plants, which I did not quite understand, but so also to all three of you, whether they're whether you see points from European policy or even German policy that supports coal uh, in your countries, whether there's anything we have to do about that. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe we collect uh, one more? Hmm? Okay, some, some more? Some more, yeah. Uh, uh, I'm from the Philippines. Uh, I'm Arvin. I would just like to... Uh, uh, not a question, but to reiterate the point, um, because it's it's easy to look at developing countries and look at renewable energy and say that in terms of the needs of the people in developing countries, renewable energy might be far off. It's It might not be in the top one. But if we look at, and this relates to the question of connecting dots, if we look at issues, uh, uh, take uh, issues concerning coal plants, it touches on issues of not just energy, but jobs. How uh, uh, we are, uh, uh, renewable energy produces more jobs than coal-fired power plants. It touches on issues of land. It takes so much land to put up transmission lines and set up coal-fired power plants and takes away from our livelihood, which connects to livelihood. And then it also has something to do with our vulnerability. Uh, when, when Yolanda struck the Philippines, when Typhoon Haiyan struck the Philippines, uh, most of the people who died, it was because of electric and transmission lines that were connected to the grid uh, and, and coal-fired power plants. Uh, when we pursue renewable energy, especially if it's distributed uh, small-scale renewable energy for the purposes of, uh, of responding to the needs of the people, it minimizes also our risk in, in climate change and climate disasters. So I think uh, when we say that renewable energy is not uh, among the top priorities of developing countries, we are missing the point. We are presented with an opportunity to actually hit and, and transform these uh, parts, dimensions of our lives when we talk of renewable energy. And that's, that's just from the experiences shared by all Southeast Asian nations. Thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, maybe one last question, and then we go uh, directly to our panelists. No, it's, just, it's not a question, but it's just a comment. And it's, not, it's also an... Ah, yes, uh, I'm Gabi Geisler. I'm um, working for GIZ in, here in uh, Berlin. Um, one common thing is, and it's not just in Asia, it's the same in Germany. The, we have a lot of good arguments to promote renewable energies. The problem is, and it's the same in every country, that with these uh, large-scale energy production systems, hydropower, uh, those coal mines, a few people can earn a lot of money, and uh, so there is no political interest to promote it. And in all the contributions, we could see that, that uh, the, the politicians they say, yes, we need renewable energies. But in the end, the system is like that, that you get the investment from China or somewhere else, and uh, some people can really earn a lot of money uh, about uh, on this. And uh, I think this is one of the core problems we have, that the political system is, is not to, to promote the, the small decentralized power structures. Thank you very much. And uh, now we're left with those two questions. Uh, the one is actually, you're supposed to do some uh, consulting for the German government formation. <laughs> so, so, so you're welcome and should kind of like argue why it is important that Germany is some sort of the role model of climate change action would actually need to 
<laughs> live up to its role model. Uh, is that important in your perspective? And the second question was um, whether um, the traces of money can be also built back to European finances uh, in your countries. Uh, so, um, may I uh, take a first response? Uh, before like joining the session, uh, I have a chance to talk with some friend here exactly the same question that you raised. Um, we seen, and not only we, but I think uh, many uh, like uh, country look Germany as a symbol of uh, like uh, uh, energy. You will have a very famous rene uh, energy vendor. So now, uh, if you like uh, determine to not uh, try or not like uh, um, achieve or maybe step back from your like target, uh, it raised a lot of question for your energy vendor. That is from my personal. Uh, perspectives. Why? Because if the German cannot achieve it, who, <laughs> who can? Because you are leading, you are championing on this like uh, sector. So I think that is the prowess of German. Um, we did debate in Vietnam, and we used the German experiences on renewable as the example. But we know that maybe your failure is. Is our lesson learned? Yeah, but I think that um, you proud of your energy vendor, and if you step back from your climate targets, uh, how you can promote your energy vendor with the the world? That is the the thing. I think that uh, as a parliament member, <laughs> you you <laughs> you should really uh, consider uh, what is uh, like. Um, a foreigner will see uh, Germany uh, on that, and um, that is also uh, linked to the the second thing. Yeah, uh, in in Vietnam, I um, I don't know or do not have uh, like uh, information about the European uh, investment for coal, uh, but as I know, um, almost is from Japan, Japan, uh, China, and Korea. Yeah, so maybe in the other country. Mm. Yeah. Pyo, if, yeah. uh, do you have any, any information on that and what's your kind of uh, consulting to the German government? Uh, I think uh, uh, in, in Myanmar, like uh, we, we are, I think uh, very recently we're dealing with the, like uh, Germany also uh, kind of taking role in Myanmar, especially the energy sector. Like uh, very recently, like uh, we have a, a German, Germany, Myanmar, like a renewable energy summit. So this kind of things like it happen. And also uh, the uh, for the like uh, the climate change. Also, I think it is is uh, like uh, I think uh, better than like uh, the France. Uh, not only the Germany, but uh, you you like uh, Germany, France. They are the leading like uh, on the climate initiatives. Uh, like uh, I think for uh, in my opinion, it's uh, better to cooperate uh, rather than the like uh, alone. I think, but I think you already have your target, and that's also wonderful. And and the other thing is like, uh, uh, we really don't see like uh, uh, support the call for the uh, from the, the EU. Or I see that, that I need the same question mostly from China and Japan, or uh, is, is it the same and like uh, only focus on the call? Super good. I will start from the the last question first, and then that link to that. Uh, yes. It's really that uh, it's the, the whole political system and the energy economy that actually really favor last, last scale project. They got a lot of money, they have many lobbyists, they influence government and many things, a lot of money going around in a handful of just a small group of really rich people. How can we change this actually? And actually Germany is one model in the world, and we can do it. Uh -huh. It's unbelievable that you reach the agreement that you will close down all nuclear power plants. We talk a lot about this in Thailand. And actually, the power utility try to live away from this discussion because it's many good things happening in Germany, and we share a lot in Thailand. Even during this trip, 
we heard from two stakeholders, from the research and also from the private sector that now you, you have some kind of consensus in Germany that you feel phase out coal in the long term, but you, you already agree. We heard that five years ago in Germany, if you talk about phase out all the coal power plant, it's still a big debate. But five years now, you're leading the way that, okay, it's still in discussion, it's a lot of details, especially job loss in one area and then job creation in other area that we learn. But something like this is really great signal, at least for Thailand. That, that, that you're thinking about facing out coal. I know that it's not only Germany, I, I know Denmark and also other countries is doing, but the influence of, of, of the country uh -huh, is really uh, Germany that, that really influenced the, the, the whole thing. And uh, we just about financing in, in Thailand, we do not have, uh, as far as I know, we do not have direct like a support <laughs> from the from the EU from, or from Germany because <laughs> Thai bank and Thai utility is uh, publicly funded. But we just learned from uh, a session before with an NGO, a German NGO that working directly on financing. And they say that uh, many diverse men, the, the good policy that you will not invest in coal anymore is maybe withdraw from some project but actually still in, in the coal industry, but not the project, but somewhere else. Another point that we learned is that maybe the bank will not finance by themselves, but through their intermediary uh, mechanism that may have some loophole and may have the risk that the policy that you said will have some loophole, that some money still go to the coal industry maybe not coal power plant project directly, but the coal industry. So that's why we need to learn and, and try to encourage each other so we will really have the, 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 in, the, the energy that actually in the hand of people and also social justice and good for the environment, for climate change and other things. Supergeet, thank you very much. I think we have to wrap up the session for today. Thank you to my three panelists and maybe a, a big round of applause for, for those three. <laughs> Os Oscar has been saying the time has been flying. It, was, it has been a pleasure to, to get to know all these details about climate of change, the struggle uh, for renewable energy in Southeast Asia. I hope you enjoyed the session as well. I, I would like to close our session just with one food of thought, uh, like one quick quote from Al Gore who said, what the world needs is a vision that the solution to our global economic challenges is precisely the solution to our climate crisis. Maybe that's actually a food for thought for later on. When we, and uh, that's, I was told up front that um, the Heinrich Böll Foundation would be kindly inviting us uh, to a quick snack and uh, some drinks. And uh, yeah, it would be uh, welcome if you join us for a little debate and uh, all to those that uh, were virtually with us with the live stream thank you for uh, watching us and uh, have a good night thank you very much from my side and here is uh, Julia um, thank you very much uh, just two really quick things so you saw that there's a really big event going on over there